Hey, how's it going? Um, I'm going to be starting a Coriolis campaign. Uh, I have four players, uh, Tim, Benson, Steve, and Andy. Um, and I wanted to just, you know, we're not going to be playing on camera, so it's not going to be a live play of any sort. Uh, but I thought I might do a vlog, right? Or a blog or whatever this is called um, occasionally to uh, kind of, you know, uh, let you know how the campaign's going, what's going on. Uh, so far, we have only had our session zero. The uh, four players have uh, created their crew and created their ship. Um, I guess I should also kind of give a little bit of background for people who might not be familiar with uh, Coriolis, Coriolis, the uh, role-playing game. It is a science fiction role-playing game uh, by Free League, Free League Publishing. It's uh, known as Coriolis, the, the Third Horizon. Um, the Third Horizon. Uh, because as, as I understand it, um, Earth was becoming overpopulated and uh, polluted. You know, just the planet was going to hell. And uh, humanity, if it was going to survive, it had to... It had to expand. So, um, it's you know, humanity started looking into uh, doing off-world uh, habitation. And so the initial attempts at it was, uh, you know, they went to the first horizon, which I'd have to reread the uh, background, but um, I think it was things like within our solar system and, you know, uh, planets that had to be not really terraformed because uh, we didn't have that and don't have that technology, but more like, um, you know, just you know, living in uh, 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 things that we've made, right? You know, so you're, you're living in uh, containers, right? Um, and then there was the second horizon, which was, you know, uh, similar to the first, but expanding out beyond our solar system. Well, then humanity was like, oh, we really need to just, we need to get out. We need to go someplace with, you know, other planets, you know, habitable planets that we can, you know, live and grow on. And uh, so they discover that the uh, Aldebaran system um, would, you know, that that area of space has uh, habitable planets and, and, you know, humanity should go there. So they finally, you know, knuckled down and they built uh, two enormous generation ships and then i'm sure they held a lottery or something and and so all these people uh who were lucky enough they get to board and live on that ship and understanding that it's going to take hundreds of years to get from earth to Alderaan, and that um, you know, they call it a generation ship because generations will live on these ships and it won't be until, you know, a thousand years later that, uh, uh, the descendants of those who boarded the ship will, will reach the destination. So these two ships leave earth and they start crossing the, the dark void in order to get to, uh, Alberon. And of course, as uh, as luck would have it, years after the generation ships have already gotten underway, and I mean they're they're way beyond communication range. Um, humanity discovers portal technology, and it's not that humanity uh, designed it; it was a true discovery. We we're like alien intelligence who have not revealed themselves to us alien intelligence have built these portals and we can use them and we can we can get to Alberon instantaneously so that's what humanity you know humanity does that they they load up go through the portals and we begin uh colonizing the area of planets over there that is the third horizon and there's a there's a whole network of portals that interlink, and so and it's kind of cool, you know. the The book shows all the inter interconnected uh, systems um, 
that are that are uh, part of this third horizon. So then you fast forward, and of course, you know, the humanity has been settling in on the planets and stuff, and just really getting ingrained um, on those planets, um, and no longer, you know, truly Terrans. I mean, you're human, but you're no longer really Terrans. Now you're, you know, Coens and, you know, all the these other, you know, people who live on these other planets. Well, then finally, of the two generation ships, one just got lost in space. Nobody knows what happened to it. Maybe that'll be an adventure someday. But uh, uh, the other ship, the Zenith, it finally makes it. Finally shows up. And the people are like, yay, we made it. And then they're like, what? There's humanity here already. And uh, so now the uh, there's kind of like two um, philosophical uh ideologies or whatever you know it's a uh the the first comes were the people who got to the systems via the portals and then the zenithians are the people and descendants of people who came via the generation ship and uh, and there's some really cool political intrigue and stuff you know this game has been kind of described as a uh, a blend between dune and the firefly TV show, movie, and stuff, uh, which I think is pretty cool. The Dune stuff is like all the political machinations, and then the Firefly is the fact that the players play as a small crew on a small ship in this, you know, realm in this world, and uh, uh, and so that's what's really cool. So we so uh, so that's what it basically is. It's not it's not like a it's not a horror sci-fi game by design. It's really it's more akin to like Traveler, right? It's it's uh it's also uh, I should say uh, because it's got a Middle Eastern flair. It's also been described as uh, the Arabian Nights in space. Um, so all of the uh, technology and clothing and culture, uh, it all has this like Middle Eastern kind of. Um, uh, design to it and it's beautiful and it's intriguing and it's really you know it really uh creates a a depth for the um uh, for this universe you know and and um uh, and i think it's kind of cool you know it's it's far far different than um than you know all the other sci-fi games that you ever see out there right i mean they're all uh based on western culture uh so this uh coriolis seems Super, super cool. Because uh, there's nothing missing. I mean, there is um, uh, uh, cybernetics. There's uh, uh, um, psionics, you know. So, you know, there's all kinds of sci-fi technology and, you know, edging into a little bit of fantasy with, you know, uh, there's, there's this, like, dawning of psionic powers, Um uh, due to another kind of event that's been going on. Um, so, you know, again, Coriolis is a very uh, rich and deep uh, background in this universe. Uh, the, the designers have done a fantastic job in giving uh, game masters and players this, like, very rich canvas to play with. So you can you can have some really intriguing uh, stories and games and stuff that you do. So to that end, um, my players and I, um, as I'm recording this tonight, is actually our very first true gameplay. Like we did our session zero, and uh, each player designed their character, and then together they designed their ship and kind of what their group concept is and stuff, um, which is really cool because as a group, uh, they're they're kind of like um, independent reporters. Um, you know, we might think of them now as, you know, in today's terms, they're, they're like guerrilla, um, uh, you know, online reporters where they, they go and, you know, do the stories that nobody else is covering for reasons and uh you know and so hopefully they're going to make a name for themselves their 
patron, every kind of group has like this patron that kind of, you know, <laughs> kind of looks out for them and, and, uh, you know, get some work and stuff. And so their patron is, uh, uh, wants to kind of investigate, uh, and maybe even possibly debunk, uh, the belief in the portal builders, uh, cause there's artifacts on all these different planets that if you look hard enough, you might find, uh, different artifacts that, that link, uh, to the portal builders and uh, and maybe if we know more about who they were and why they just left their technology behind I mean maybe we can you know figure out more about them and, and maybe that'll help uh, move humanity maybe to its next uh, you know uh, evolution level or something right I mean who knows uh, we can take this anywhere we want to go um, so our uh, uh, our four crew members, um, aboard. Uh, so Andy has created uh, a data spider, which is the name for a, uh, that's the, that's the class of character who's very much into uh, technology and, uh, you know, a hacker and, you know, being able to do uh, things um, with uh, information online, right? Doing all that kind of stuff. Um, so that's, that's really cool. The, the, the data spider. Um, Benson has created uh, a character who's really uh, kind of thinking of this, if you, we equate it to the A-Team, um, if you know, for those who might remember that show, um, uh, Benson's character is really kind of like the face man, um, or uh, those who are, or here's a more contemporary example, those who are familiar with Firefly, Benson's character is very much more like the Inara, um, which um, has its place, right? You know, uh, um, uh he's a male seductor and he can um you know get into uh, uh political arenas that that some of these other characters can't get into and has connections that are you know again some of these other characters don't have these connections so uh benson's very much our, our face man he'll be the um the public representative uh for this um uh, this group and, and probably I guess we haven't talked about it yet, but it's probably the uh, the on air personality. I think when these people are doing their, when these characters are doing their uh, invest, you know, investigative stories, uh, and of course, whenever you're going to go into what could be possibly dangerous technology, uh, you need to have some muscle. And so Steve is a soldier character, and uh, and is going to be really that uh, that tank in the group. Uh, and then Tim is the uh, trailblazer, um, and uh, the trailblazer is kind of like a, a, a scout. A, um, a tra- he's going to be the uh, 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 oh, I should also say for Steve's soldier character, he's also going to be the cameraman. Uh, we went and uh, designed some stuff where he can his camera equipment is kind of large and bulky, but that's because. And it's unnecessarily large and bulky uh, because it's got hidden cavities in it where he's got weapons and stuff stashed in his in his uh, uh, in his camera. Uh, but uh, uh, Tim's Trailblazer is uh, going to be kind of like the uh, the producer of the show and is going to be the one who um, primarily interfaces and gets the uh, uh, the marching orders uh, from the patron. And uh, and we'll kind of put plans together and and um, and get us into. He'll kind of lead the way as we kind of go into the uh, these territories that they're going to be unfamiliar with, and then you know start figuring out things as they go along. Uh, should be really really cool. Um, there's some really cool spaceships. Um, that are in the game system again, very much like uh, Traveler. You know how it's got a bunch of great, you know, spaceship designs uh, for players to use as their home base, their mobile home base, right? And so uh, for these guys, um, their spaceship is a uh, Scarab class light freighter, and uh, uh, and it's named the Omaha, which we all thought was that's kind of a cool name. I mean, it's not, it doesn't, you know jive with the um the middle eastern uh you know arabian angle quite so much but it's still a really really cool name and uh and so it's stuck once that came up everybody in the group was like 
it's a really cool name. So uh, the Omaha is their ship. And uh, yeah, so it's going to be kind of cool. And it's, you know, as a, as a, as a light freighter, um, it's more akin to something like, well, it's a lot like the Firefly uh, Serenity. Um, it's also a lot like the Millennium Falcon. Um, so that's the, that's the kind of, uh, of ship that they're going to be using. So anyways, um, I'm super excited for this. I hope this, uh, uh, this goes well. The players are looking forward to it. We're all, we've got a discord that we're using and, um, we've just been trading information and, uh, getting background stories for all the player characters. So, you know, they're really kind of, uh, providing enough meat, uh, on, with each character, that uh, it'll give me something to work with. Um, once we kind of get past this initial uh, scenario, I, I, I picked one of the initial scenarios from the core book, and I've kind of gone through, and it's very bare bones. And so uh, just it's fully playable as is, but I went through and just kind of started beefing it up and uh, adding some other scenes and adding some uh, different encounters and things like that that I thought might uh, might just be more interesting and and, you know, give the players some uh, extra opportunities to, uh, you know, use their skills and uh, role play and uh, kind of get into the mystery that they're, you know, that they're going to be solving. Um, I, I suspect that a lot of the scenarios that we'll play are, are going to be mystery based scenarios, but I mean, you can do all kinds of scenarios, right? You, I mean, you can have a, a prison break kind of scenario at some point you can, um, I you know, it's I think the the skies are are you know there's no limit you know skies the limit so um it should be fun I'm looking forward to it so again and as we play this I'll try and come out here and um and do one of these blogs so hopefully this was successful it's the first time I've ever done something like this so we'll see how it goes anyways take care and uh, uh look up all right bye.